Well, good morning. It's getting late in the morning here, but I just, uh, well, I want to start first. I am a former legislator. I know we have a problem with politicians here. I just want to be up front here. I am recovering. I am recovering. Um, I am a policy wonk at that, and I do want to state up front, I am not a scientist. I don't even play one on TV. Nothing to do with them. So what, I, what we need to do is, as we've been talking about uh, these last uh, day and a half, is the need to reset, I say restore, the environmental and energy policies under a Trump administration. And by doing so, a few things to do. Return to the original tent of our founding fathers for governing. Stop the overreach of the federal government. Fe return to federalism and state responsibility. Congress should start doing their job. That'd be really a good thing. We was mentioned the Congressional Review Act. That has to actually evolve into the full reviews and start following the rule of law. Regulation and rule is law. If they're going to have something equal to law, it must be reviewed only by the lawmakers. So that's where we need to start. So they, we've been hearing a lot um, in the last day and a half, really kind of from this 10,000 foot level discussion. I'm going to take you down to the ground level, really kind of the underground level, because we're going to talk about the regulations of the um, oil and gas industry and what's been happening over the years here. The original tent of our founding fathers, and it is time that we return to these founding principles that, that were established. I mean, there, we, we right now have big cracks in the mortar of this foundation. And it is time to fill in those, in, in, fill, up, fill in the cracks and, and fix the mortar there. And so with that, um, I'm going to jump a little bit here. I got some uh, things out of place, but these are some of the some of them that we need to look at. And, and when you look at this list here, I want you to take a serious look and tell me which ones of those are constitutional. Are really any of them in, in the enumerated powers? Okay, so keep that in mind as we go, and let's begin to put, un put the unconstitutional things to rest and so that we can be not pulling our hair out every time we try to do anything in our country. And I'm going to back up to this one because I want to go into the state's responsibilities. And here's just a list of three little things that if we would allow the states to do, we could solve a lot of the problems from what the federal government has been trying to regulate. Every state has its own needs and its own issues. It's not a one-size-fits-all government program piece. Each one solves its own problems in a different way because the problems come about differently. These are three good starting places for regulation. We have had an overreach of the, all the agencies we just looked at. We've had overreach in all of them in unconstitutional authorities, and they are trying, and, and Congress must stop this from happening. It's, that's their job to do this. Uh, as a, Attorney General, uh, the Administrator Pruitt knows all too well, this is, this is perfect for him, because he knows how much the states have been spending over the last several years in lawsuits over these regulations and rules. Um, and it's cost the states millions of dollars, while Congress sat and did little to nothing. So at that, let's dig in. Let's take a look and see what uh, some of the things that can be done to make it right in the overreach of the, the past administrations and what, has, what these problems are really causing. So let's step into this mess. I love my grandson, sorry, he gets to be, <laughs> I have to bring him with. And so we'll start with um, parts of the Department of Interior and with BIA. And I'm just doing a real cursory, this, this there are many, many more, but I'm going to just give you a glance at what oil and gas was facing. Um, as was mentioned, I'm from North Dakota. And so we, we deal a lot of energy there and oil and gas um, is, is a big deal to us. And, so with this, we need to start a streamlining the process. Um, that's what they thought they were doing when they started this regulation um, that, that we're dealing with here. And um, what they did was made it complicated, lengthy, and they actually stopped the ability for um, any transfer or repurchase of pipelines going through the Indian lands. 
Okay, and so with that, now we have monopolies and we have um, actually created um, a limit on, on gas capture and movement. And with that, what's their big thing? Well, you gotta stop the burning of the methane. Well, you've just made it impossible to do that because you won't let us transfer the gases. And so it's just really been um, one way over, this is just one of their ways to shut it down. They knew what they were doing. Make no mistake, they don't, they don't do this on purpose, they do it on purpose. Um, another area of the Department of Interior, and whether, whether it can come from um, Secretary Zinke or if it has to come out of just BLM or if we're going to have to go right to, to Trump to have all this done, I, I'm not getting into the particulars on a lot of these, but with these we had onshore rules uh, that, that were in place, uh, rule number three, number four, number five, these are ones they went after in the, in the last few years here. And in so, what they did was they made it difficult for multi-pad, multi-level, multi-directional drilling to take place, trying to, uh, the, the states were building in, in these, these pad areas, and I have a picture of that I'll show you later. Well, they're trying to make it so you have to leapfrog frog around and make it, it bad for the environment versus the nice pad work that was being done and developed. And so that's what they did here, and by doing this, they're trying to stop fracking from ever being able to take place because they interfere on saying that this little portion is federal, so now all of it's federal in, in the padding. And so we go into the next area, and there's two more that are like this. And with that, um, the ways this, these rules um, failed to incorporate, what they ended up doing is they, you have the API and AGA that know their industry and know how things work, and yet you have an organization, uh, uh, this BLM comes in and says, well, that's all fine and good, but we're going to tell you to do it this way. And they don't use the regulations and, and the ways it's been set up and researched and done by industry to make sure it goes right. And so what they end up doing is they put in um, some standards, and they, what they did was they ended up putting them in the CFR, but they're standards that were almost outdated by the time they were printed because they don't allow for technology, they don't allow for any advancements to take place, modifications, improvements, nothing because it's been codified. And so what they need to do is get these things repealed and then put in properly. Again, um, all of these things, they were all rushed in so far, these BLM ones, they were all rushed in by them to stop fracking. So they were so poorly written that um, when, when it comes to the, um, the Rule 43 here, um, the second one listed, we end up, we finally had Congress. They came in, because this one, this one happened in, in uh, the midnight hour of Obama leaving. They threw this rule out there, and so they were able to capture it on a CR, uh, uh, the CRA. And in doing so, um, we've got it part way. Now we need to wake up the senators. It's, it's bad enough to when we have to sit and listen to what's been happening the last three days dealing with Obamacare in, in Congress, but our senators are no better, so make no mistake there. Um, and, and they need to figure out who's going to make the final vote here and get this passed and get it done. And as they sit and fight over that, the rest of uh, industry and, and our states suffer for it. On to a little bit more on the BLM. Um, they have put, again, um, in the Code of Federal Regulations, uh, some things that um, don't work. Uh, this the first rule here um, is being held up in the court. It was held up, actually, it was held up for two, two years. And the new administration, actually, the DOJ did pull this already. Um, they didn't even wait till this past Wednesday. They pulled it and um, they stopped all the hearing delays and they stopped it and now the BLM is actually has it on hold and hopefully they're not even going to bother trying to rewrite. They're just going to be done, it'll be done away with. Um, another one that I just, I, I find frustrating is BLM coming in and using um, the EIS to stop all the fracking and, and ability by saying that these, um, 
<laughs> these sage grouse. And, and I grew up in a, a family of hunters. Trust me, I, I understand all of the upland game. Don't, don't get me wrong. I, I, I love having the ability to hunt and, and stuff. But this is, this is an overreach that absolutely does not be, belong. They ended up in this um, shutting down um, pipelines all throughout Colorado and every place else. It, it, it's um, onerous and does not belong. Um, this ruling just does not make any sense at all. So let's move on to everybody's favorite um, one, one to pick on, and, and EPA. And, and with EPA, um, what's really interesting is um, these are all, when you look at the EPA ones, these are all rules that were looking for a problem. Most of them came about because of a sue and settle situation. So um, this first one here was a perfect example of sue and settle. And with that, I, I'm personally, okay, I'm just gonna get, personally, I think somebody at the EPA, and, and I have no proof, I'm just saying, leaked a little bit of information to a group of environmentalists. And, and said, you know what, you know, so this hasn't been reviewed for a few years, so you know, if somebody would just bring it up, we could sue, we could maybe get you to settle where we want. And sure enough, they do. The judge denies a stay, and within a week they have the new rules written. Huh, do you, have anybody else seen how a rule could get written in Congress in less than a week? Okay, maybe there was a little bit going there. Fortunately, we were able to get it uh, sued up through enough of the courts to have it frozen in time at this point. We're gonna need, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> sorry. Um, the, the DOJ uh, is gonna have to have, the administration's gonna have to start stepping in on this and, and get it going. And <coughs> so with that, um, uh, on the next one, we have um, a, a very important, uh, and this, this, is, this is very important, that it has to be stopped, because with this particular one, what they have done is, um, they're trying to say that all um, wastewaters uh, from fracking, all materials used in fracking are now all considered hazardous waste basically going to destroy um, the industry. <clears throat> and the next one, uh, President Trump took care of right away, and that was a, that's a real good deal. On the next, uh, we also, these were on venting and flaring rules, and again, overreach that makes no sense. The states have primacy on this. Um, they already had everything in place. The next one um, made no sense again, uh, trying to overstep and double up on regulations and reporting and what it, uh, frac focus was already um, in place, being implemented, is in full force and they're just trying to get at trade secrets. That's all that next, that last one is all about. Um, we all um, can all cheer, WOTUS is over, WOTUS is over, WOTUS is over. So we'll move on from there. And we've got, um, yeah, go ahead and applaud. I'm glad to have WOTUS done. That was a, a very burden, a big burden, not only to energy industry, the coal industries, the uh, farming industries, real, real estate, it, it was a disaster. Um, this one here is a really interesting one, and, and it's a political move by the North Dakota, or excuse me, Freudian there, New, New York um, Attorney General. Impossible to achieve, a uh, uh, 9.0 PSA, um, just some little facts. Um, national standard is 14.7. Industry works at a 13.7 because of a 1% margin of error that can take place, they've set that. But I want you to know that when you get in your vehicle and you're driving unleaded gas, that's 13.5. How are you doing there, New York? Uh, it says all modes of transportation. So are they gonna arrest every driver? I, I'm, I'm just curious uh, how they wanna implement that one. Another one of my, my favorites and my big pet peeve, uh, one, of my, uh, one of those that just really needs to go away, uh, <laughs> U.S. Fish and Wildlife Services, or disservice, I guess, is what I call them. Uh, they uh, overstepped. This is all about birds butterflies and fish. This is just North Dakota, what they came up with in the last couple of years. And 
it goes all the way through. You can go state by state. Everybody will list them all out, what they've done. What they've done here, and it has no, no bad, they, you know, they don't have to have a reason. That's the part. That's the part. ESA doesn't have to have a reason. They don't take input. They just list this stuff out and shut things down. It's very frustrating, especially when they talked about monarch butterflies. I had so many in my backyard, and I loved having them back there. And now, you know, it's just like, well, am I allowed to clip my flowers because I've got a monarch butterfly back here that wants to sit on it? it it's, it's frustrating, and, and, you know, they're dangerous. The, these two organizations are dangerous, and they, it needs to set up on, you know, the states know what the safety standards are. They know how to re reclaim the lands. They know what they need to do. So, again, I just, I, I could go on for days with that. But on this one here, it's a really interesting um, ruling that they made. But um, it has to do with easements on the lands. And, and when they do this, it um, becomes very complicated because they want to say that if there's this much federal land involved, we get to regulate everything, even the private lands, and, and that's just frustrating there. So we've been talking about what these environmentalists have done through regulation. Well, here's what the environmentalists did in North Dakota in the last few months. They um, have done nothing but try to destroy the land. Uh, look at the big fires. They wouldn't leave until they burned all of their stuff down. We all know from what we're hearing from our um, investigations from there, they were burning the evidence of, of things that um, are yet to be talked about. But um, I will tell you that uh, there are questions on human trafficking and various other abuses that were taking place in these camps. These were not, as you see, you know, yes, we did have teepees, we did have some Native Americans there. That's not who was um, causing these problems, I will tell you that too. We had <clears throat> about 10,000 environmentalists that showed up and camped there. This is how they left it, environmentally safe. They actually left um, the land and waters so endangered that they had, we have spent, um, is it 30 million now in cleanup? Just from what uh, one of their camps have, have left behind and we still don't know if it's not going to damage the river and the water that they claimed that they were there as water protectors for. Yes, we do have bad players in the industry. They do cause spills. This was an actually a, a purpose dumping. They were caught. They were made to clean up the mess. They paid for that mess. And now the land is running back to its normal state. Here's what the um, plots, the, the well pads look like from an aerial view and how we stack the rigs. This is all to keep our environment and, and less involvement um, to the land. So when it's all done, it's reclaimed. And this is a piece of our beautiful um, North Medora area in North Dakota of a post-drilling uh, area. This land was bonded before it was started. It was held in, um, till it was in a predetermined uh, state and uh, reclaimed to that and returned back to the owners. So again, what is this? It's all about the original intent and what the Founding Fathers want. Let's get back to starting to honor the Tenth Amendment and how things are done. We have the federal agencies and everybody else that want to rein in on the, on, on the territories and the parades of everybody else and what needs to be done. But who knows how to take care of the land better than the owners themselves and the people that live there, not somebody out in Washington, D.C. So in closing, what I say to you today is, are you looking at a sunrise or a sunset? For I, for one, I'm hoping and praying that I'm looking at the sun rising in our country again. Thank you.